Hey, welcome back. 26-year-old Abilengpe Brown, supervisor of Mawako Restaurant, Jihad Chaban, who is accused of assaulting a caterer at the restaurant, has pleaded not guilty to three on all three counts against him. His lawyer, Asaf Weje, told the Abakan District Court to grant the accused bail. Tasano Police Chief Inspector Hansen Ama led prosecution and argued against the request, saying the accused could interfere with investigations if released. The trial judge, Victoria Gansa, declined the request for bail. Lawyer Augustin Asafweje, who represents Jihad Chaban, maintains that his client is innocent. My colleague Joseph Akable was in court. He joins me now in the studio. He can help us with what transpired in court today as we do not have access to that place with our cameras. You're welcome. Tell us. Thank you, Gifty. Uh, so it was actually a packed courtroom, lots of attention, obviously, uh, because of the reporter that has come with the case. But essentially, uh, he was asked to enter a plea that is a statement that is whether he's innocent or guilty as mm -hmm. charged. And his position on the matter was that he is innocent. In fact, the three counts are to do with assault, offensive conduct, and causing harm. And right. on all those three counts, he maintained that he was innocent. innocent. Now, afterwards, the prosecution then told the court that it was on 26th of February that the incident occurred. Mm. The said lady was using a blender and helping a colleague blend some pepper when the gentleman walked in and asked the lady why she was using the blender. He proceeded mm. uh, to insult the lady and referred to her as a prostitute in Lebanese, okay. after which uh, he pushed her head into the pepper. So that is a version of the prosecution on the matter okay. uh, but he didn't have an opportunity to respond to the substantive issue his lawyer then came in and said that the gentleman had been arrested he was granted bail and we arrested by the police so he wanted mm. them the courts to grant him bail again but the position of the uh, prosecution was that they, they are trying to engage workers from the restaurant and the indication they are getting is that they have been threatened that if uh, in the events they go ahead and speak to the prosecution they may risk losing their job so because of that uh, they don't want uh, them uh, to have access to him so right. they don't want him to be released but the judge did not agree with that and after the court hearing i spoke to lawyer uh, for the accused person augustin asafuji he is very clear in his mind that his client is innocent his client is innocent what well, we can hear uh, from lawyer asafuji now the court is minded that in the interest of security for um, all the parties in the action my client should be remanded. It is only fair that we also comply with what the court will say. If we think uh, there is any other considerations in respect of bail that we intend to consider, we will say do. You see, this may have been hearing a lot of things on the radio, that he was detained for six hours, he was put in um, the... his face was pushed into the blended um, pepper. Question is, was it in the, when the um, pepper was in the blender or where? Could the face have entered the blender? Those are some of the things sometimes issues come and you have to ask so that you get the correct facts. You just take the information and incite everybody against. You see, we are people where we have to also look at individuals who commit crime by themselves and not to generalize because the way we do our things if we put people in groups and say they are all criminals is that fair you told the court he's a Ghanaian. yes he is and the company is a Ghanaian company too his ankles that you see with fair colors are Ghanaian. the incident that happened has been misrepresented what are the facts? The facts, the facts, as we have it now, the fact is that there was a splash of pepper into the face of the lady. It cannot be intentional. It cannot be intentional. It cannot be intentional. You understand? And where? If, and have you bothered to find out whether the following day the girl went to work? The following day the girl went to work. He when the incident happened, he was on the night shift. The following day, 7 a.m., she was at work. So that is lawyer Safwe uh, counsel for 
uh, Mawako, uh, obviously for Chaban, they're speaking. Uh, we understand. He said they're Ghanaian. The company is Ghanaian. Yes. Indeed. So they've basically registered or they've basically gone through the documentation to make them Ghanaians. Is that it? So the first part is that a gentleman, in terms of citizenship, he is a Ghanaian. The company okay. is a registered Ghanaian company owned by a Ghanaian because okay. the guy is a Ghanaian. Again, a Ghanaian. Uh, he makes the. So in fact, the prosecution were the ones who, while reading the statements of the matter, mentioned that the gentleman who is accused is a Ghanaian. Is Ghanaian. Yeah. Okay. But so which so so it means then that in any case of uh, uh, if the, the verdict is out, I mean of course, and it goes it doesn't go in his favour, then he will not be deported. Even if he's Ghanaian, he will still have to face some kind of. It depends a, on it depends sanction. on how soon they've acquired their citizenship. Because if it's something that, assuming they've been here for years, that becomes a bit difficult. But if that is not the case, I mean they could strip them of that. That is if they gain it. The very citizenship. Yeah. Okay, I see. Interesting. So what next? Uh, we are going back next week Tuesday. Uh, that is, you'll be brought before the court again where they, we expect the matter to be opened uh, officially. Okay, thank you very much, Joseph. Joseph Akable, very soon you've got, you've got to come in the studio with the week. That shows that you've been, <laughs> you stayed in the court for a very long time. Joseph Akable has been reporting for us from the court. Uh, we're talking about the Mawako case. There. Well, let's move back and go return to our previous story, our actually dominating story today. With the gender minister, Otiku Officer Jabba, has been calling for an end to violence against women as we mark International Women's Day today. In a statement to Parliament to mark the day, she cited the abuse of a staff at Mawako restaurant, which is just what we're talking about, and the alleged thief in Kumasi last month. As examples of acts that should end, she says government is expanding its social intervention policies to help better the lives of women. Joseph Opokugafo is there for us and joins me on the line. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Gifty. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. It's good to have you at this point. Uh, exactly what did she come to Parliament to do beyond presenting uh, this statement? Well, that was um, you know, precisely the reason for which she came as part of activities marking the International Women's Day. Um, Madam Mutiko Afisa Jaba was in the house to deliver a statement to actually mark the celebration and it was expected that additionally then there will be contributions from members of parliament as well. She outlined some of the measures that are being taken by government or that government intends to undertake to make women better off. She, for example, indicated that when it comes to the issue of the affirmative action bill, this is something that government will be committed to doing a lot of review on and getting it out there. She also indicated that she is hopeful that this bill, when uh, reviewed and passed by the House, would help strengthen the position of women okay. and help get a lot more women into positions of authority in the right. country. Right. She commented on one other bill, the interstate succession uh, bill, okay. and indicated that this is something that they would intend to review to further strengthen the position of women. And then she commented on government social intervention policy and said that when it comes to the livelihood, uh, you know, empowerment against poverty, leap, and also the school feeding program, they hope to expand these all to better the interests of women. She rounded up by making the point that there is a need for all sorts of abuse against women to end. She specifically mentioned the incident at the Mawako restaurant recently and also the alleged incident of um, a woman who was beaten because she saw something in the Kumasi area. And right. you would recall that a video of that went viral recently. Mm. She mentioned that these are acts that are condemnable and going forward. So we'd want okay. some of these incidents of abuse against women to end. Stop. Were there any other contribution from other members of parliament as she presented this? Because, I mean, across the country, I mean, people are observing the day and honoring women. Were there anything said on, on the floor of parliament in, in relation to this? Yes, uh, there were contributions from uh, both male and female members of parliament. The uh, minority leader, Harun Idrisu, for example, uh, insisted that it's time that government rules out more concrete action okay. to help protect women. She said that particularly when it comes to rural women, he's expecting that you know, as time goes by, government will bring to the House a bill that would help protect rural women in terms of helping empower them economically and also uh, give offering them the necessary protection that they need. Okay. The majority leader, uh, that um, authority men supposed to, also contributed to that. He quoted portions of the Constitution to state that the, the law is very emphatic, that there should be no form of discrimination against anyone based on the agenda. And so uh, he, he's expecting that all persons respect right. those laws and, and, and ensure 
that there is no discrimination Let, let's against get to women. other business, uh, other business yeah. on the floor of Parliament today. We understand they started a debate on the 2017 budget. Yes. Um, Arthur Forsen, who is a minority spokesperson on finance, uh, made some contribution to that. But even before that, the chairman of the finance committee, that um, Mark Asipe Yabua, Dr. Mark Asipe uh, Yabua, he began the whole debate and indicated that he thinks that this budget is a budget that resonates with the people and okay. that when the budget was read, clearly uh, it reflected in the lives of ordinary people in the market, ordinary people on the street saw their benefit when it comes to the withdrawal of taxes. And for him, that is what a budget should mean, and he saw that rightly. The minority raised a number of concerns. We've heard them already indicate that they don't think that this budget would help better the lives of Ghanaians. But one key issue that came up had to do with the strict assembly common fund. Right. The minority spokesperson on finance indicated that per the calculation, the law, the constitution is clear that at least 5% of all resources that are coming to the state is allocated to the district assembly common fund. But from the figures that he has seen, about 1.5 billion cities is being allocated to the fund. When you compare that with the total amount of revenue that government is expecting, which is around 31 billion cities, that is far less when it comes to the required percent. And this is okay. a constitutional breach. And so if government does not fix it, to quote his words, they, the minority side, may not support government when it comes to approving the, the budget. budget. Okay. Well, we'll say very big thanks to you, Gakpo. Well, we're expecting that you bring us some more on this in our subsequent bulletin. Joseph Opoku Gakpo is our parliamentary correspondent bringing us up to speed as to what happened there. Mother Motiko speaking to the International uh, Women's Day and, of course, the other business which, is, uh, which has to do with debate on the 2017 budget. So as we celebrate International Women's Day, it appears to have been centered around women in the workplace. Well, the CEOs, the big short, but one often overlooked section of women in the workplace are the market women. Well, we've gone to the Malata market to gauge the thought of women there on International Women's Day. As for me, I haven't heard about this International Women's Day. I just heard about it from the radio news. It seems we don't celebrate it with gifts and packages for women, like other special days. International Women's Day. Today is International Women's Day. Women are like glass. If you take care of us well, we will make you so happy. And you know, God has blessed women with the grace to manage affairs. You see, there are so many women than men. That's why it's important to celebrate this day. Since I haven't heard about the International Women's Day, I don't really know its significance. Plus, I don't see anything special about this day. No special gifts for women, so I don't really see its importance. I've heard about this day, and I think it's a great way to celebrate women and all we achieve at home and at the workplace. I think it's a great idea. As for me, I haven't seen anything special to show that today is International Women's Day. So, I don't really see the importance of this day. Well, many of them don't seem to even know what it's about. Well, we're celebrating them anyway. Those are voices from the Malata market from women as we celebrate International Women's Day. Away from that, there is massive encouragement along the Achimota railway lines as some quarters have put up structures very close to the rail lines. A bridge that connects part of the rail line has also collapsed with some of the rail workers fixing it on Wednesday afternoon. The situation has altered the movement of trains on that section of the rail lines. Minister for Railways Development, Joe Gatti, toured the Achimota train station to ascertain for himself the situation on the ground. Speaking to the media, he stated that the ministry will work to revamp the sector. That we work with those who have encroached on the corridor. They must understand that the standard gauge and the trains we are going to um, bring on board in the near future are the kind of trains that move very fast. 
in secondary Takwari, what happened was that they put some form, form of fencing on both sides of the track. There are a lot of um, temporary structures along here that we must deal with. I mean, but we are not going to deal with it in a violent man manner. We are going to let people understand that it's not even safe for them to be there. When you have a slow train that comes along once in a while and makes a lot of noise, you can live near the track. But if you are, the, the kind of trains that we are going to employ is dangerous. So, well, it just, we are continuing our process of assessing what we need, our needs and so on. And I'm sure that we'll succeed. This is an impromptu, uh, as it were, visit because we have to address a specific situation. But it is not within our whole um, framework and our plan of action. I think we'll address all these matters. We see we see a lot of um, grounded, we, we saw some grounded coaches, um, grounded and rusty coaches. What, what are you going to do to, you know, revamp the sector and make sure we get rid of even some of these things? Well, the point is that um, if the coach is in such a situation that cannot be used any longer, then he should not be on the track. And yes, there are people who are doing all kinds of things and um, taking the law into their own hands and doing things on the coach and so on. I take the opportunity to ask them to think twice because the, the, the regime has changed. Things are going to completely change. I'm not going to tolerate lawlessness in the system. And so, yes, we will do what we have to do in the best interest of our country, in a humane manner to let things work. Yes. And if you look at the budget in the infrastructure sector, I think it's only the roads ministry that has higher capex than us. You know, it's a serious matter. It's not a joke, and um, you can see that it needs focus. It needs um, people looking at it and that alone. And it's not. You see, when you see railway, and I keep on saying this, and you see only the track, then you've missed you've missed the point, because it is not just the track. Minister for Railway Development, Joe Gatti, there were Deputy Managing Director of Engineering at the Ghana Railway Company Limited, Michael Ajay, enumerated some challenges that they're facing as railway workers. Well, currently, apart from um, probably the salary, which the Honorable has already promised that he's working on it, basically, uh, some of the challenges are um, tools and materials to work with, you know. And then, as you can see, just behind you, yeah. all this, this, um, makeshift bridges that we're constructing mm. is just um, some sort of innovation that is coming from us, mm. you know, but the proper thing has to be done. Hence, we inviting the Honorable Minister to come and have a look at it and see how best he can, you know, mm. help us move forward. So basically, you know, we, we have a lot of challenges we can't see all here, but uh, spare parts is one of them, tools to work with, you know, and other materials that will help the industry to to grow so basically these are the challenges okay. we see um that the railway line a lot of them very very weedy we see some grounded um trains also w what's the challenge with that one too yeah like 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 i said you know regarding the weeding you need cutlasses to weed i'm not standing here to tell you we don't have cutlasses mm -hmm. we have cutlasses you understand but then if the railway worker wants to weed how does he weed for instance we have if the person is responsible for a four mile stretch mm -hmm. you don't expect him to walk four miles and go and weed and come back. We need what we call the rail car or gang trolleys to transport them from one location to the other. So these are some of the things that are missing. You don't have that? We don't have them. But the Honorable has promised that um, he's going to help us to get all these things. So we, we are very grateful. There's serious encroachment going on here. You can see some private developers have taken section of um, the railway you know, line. What are you doing to ward them off, what, or what have you done so far? Yeah, I don't know whether you notice. Some, most of the structures mm. we've written to be demolished, yeah. and some we've, we've, we've written removed. Mm. But the Honorable just made mention that we need to make sure the corridor is cleared because development is coming, development is here. You understand? So most of my guys, we've sensitized them that you need to go around and then spread the gospel. People who have encroached on the railway land should leave the railway land. Talking about real development there.